So now we know all this stuff about stresses. What good is it? Through tests like the ones that you will be doing in the lab, we can determine what the maximum amount of stress a material can take. And this is referred to as the ultimate strength. It's tabulated all over the place. You can get books and whatnot. One of my favorite resources is matweb.com. I used it extensively when I was in the defense industry. It is a great database with a bunch of material properties. And so we can look that up. And so we've got the ultimate stress. And that's where it's going to break. Do we design materials to go all the way to the ultimate stress? Of course not. Because there is some variability in any numerical property that we put together. And if things are off by a couple percent and you've designed it right up to the ultimate stress and you get a piece of material that's a little bit lower, things are going to fail and it's, it's, you're going to have a bad time. So what we do is we talk about allowable stresses. So what is an allowable stress? This is also called the working stress or design stress. And this is a stress that is lower than the ultimate stress that you're actually designing your materials to. Uh, so typically the design stress is 70 to 90% of the yield strength, which we're going to talk about in the next chapter. But a lot of this is going to come down to company or individual policy. And so the way that we figure this out is we use this term called factor of safety. And so what is the factor of safety? We have a huge slide of information here instead of writing it out. And it's basically, it is by how much you, your allowable is under your ultimate. Now, this could be for stress. We could talk about factor safety using load, and we'd have the ultimate load over the allowable load. So the whole concept of factor of safety is just going to be the ultimate over the allowable. So in this context, if you're using a factor of safety of three, that is going to be that your allowable stress is one third of what your ultimate stress is. So if I'm designing something and the ultimate stress is 120,000 PSI and I want to have a factor of safety of three, well, that tells me that my allowable stress will be 40,000 PSI. And so really, it's just a safety consideration. And so as you look at this list of things that I have here, uncertainty material properties, uncertainty in analysis, loading cycles, types of failure, blah, blah, blah. You can read all of that. I'm not going to read it out to you. I am figuring at this point in your collegiate career, you can handle reading a list. But so what is a good factor of safety? Well, it depends. There's a lot of factors that go into it, and so there's really no hard and fast rule for factor of safety. Design engineers have to be cautious, and when I was a little engineering student, I was always told to never go below a factor of safety of three. Now, in my first job, typically we did not. We were playing a lot tighter to weight limits and things of that nature. And so a lot of times our factor of safety might have been as low as 1.5. But once again, it all is going to come down to your industry and what you're doing. Um, piece of equipment for special forces, eh, take a little bit more risk. Making a bridge that millions of people are going to drive over, eh, maybe have a little bit higher factor of safety. Maybe you go up to a five on that. But that is all based on what the policy is and what your, your company or your individual policy is going to be. Now, so this is all for normal stress. For shearing stress under static load, uh, yielding will occur when the maximum shear stress exceeds the yield strength in shear. The problem is, is sometimes you can't look that up. You won't be able to find that material. So how do you figure out what the ultimate shear stress is going to be or the yielding stress? And once again, yield is something we'll talk about in the next chapter, but a handy approximation is S yield. So this would be the shear. The shear yielding strength is going to be the tensile yield strength. Divided by two. 
Now, this is just something to keep in hand. Now, this is specifically for the yield strength, which I said is a slightly different property than the ultimate strength, but we'll talk about that more in the next chapter. But that's something to write down and to, to have as an extra piece of information because it might come up in your design projects. It might come up in stuff that you're doing. But that is how factor of safety works. It's a pretty simple thing. Uh, and the next problem that we do, we're going to exploit factor of safety quite a bit. And with that, if there are any questions, please let me know. If not, I will see you in the next video.